Okay, so we've got a molecular formula of C6H12O6. We decided the simplest ratio is CH2O. Fine. Could we have another molecular formula that had the same empirical formula? You betcha. We could have C3H6O3. We could have C2H4O2. We could have c 10 H20, O10. Do they all have the same empirical formula? Yes. yes. I can never make this that perfect. Me neither. Well, practice. Lots and lots of practice. So, actually, you know what? Stop. Let me let me um, rearrange something here. C2 H4. Two C three H six O three C four H eight O four. Okay, there. Sorry. Now, there is a relationship between something's molecular formula and its empirical formula. There is some multiplier for each one of these. And that multiplier, you just multiply the subscripts by, and lo and behold, you've got the molecular formula. So, for that one, what would your multiplier be? Two. Times two. Gets you that. For C3H6O3, what would your multiplier be? Three. Times three. For this one, what would it be? Yep, times four. For this one, what would it be? Times 10. So for any molecular formula, there is some relationship to the empirical formula. There's some simple whole number that you multiply it by. Couldn't be easier, right? Okay. <laughs> so let's, let's write that as a statement of, of mathematical truth. So the molecular formula equals some number x, that's our little multiplier, times the empirical formula. This is true, right? Okay. Well, here's the neat thing. This also means that the molecular formula Oops, I spelled that wrong, didn't I? Mass is equal to x times the empirical formula mass. Ah. Now we got some algebra we can work with. <laughs> My favorite. It's okay, it won't hurt. Okay, let's practice with this one. So you guys were all able to just intuitively see that if we multiply this empirical formula by 2, we get that molecular formula. You didn't have to do that algebraically. You didn't have to use your calculators. You didn't have to do anything. Well, let's find the mass of CH2O. Someone who is taking, someone who has taken AP government or is taking AP government? No, but no. <laughs> Somebody who wrestles. Okay, so one of you. Somebody who plays a musical instrument. Oh, 30.03. 30.03. I could pick on you all, all day. Somebody who's got more than three siblings. Somebody who, yeah, I can. I learn things about you people. I can use them against you. <laughs> Somebody who works with dogs on a regular basis. <laughs> okay, so we've got an empirical formula mass for this stuff. Let's figure
figure out the molecular formula mass for this. What do you get for the molecular formula mass of C2H4O2? Somebody who plays baseball. Wouldn't it just be that? Oh, it does. You're absolutely right. But add those up. 60.03. 06. Oh, yeah, 06. Sorry. Okay. Oh, I corrected the teacher. <laughs> you did. Okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, I don't have a PhD. Nobody cares what I think. Um, okay. <laughs> told us that. <laughs> 60.06 is equal to some number x times 30.03. What's x? Two. 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 Oh. Well, guess what? That's what you already knew. That's all you have to do. So the way these problems are typically given to you is we'll say um, a f compound has an empirical formula of CH2. It has a molecular mass of, let's see, It has a molecular mass of 84.12. What's its molecular formula? So you want to try one like that? Okay. Let me break the video so that we aren't too long to upload.